Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a complex expression. We have square root of 3 minus 3i divided by 2 all over to the power 12 and we're going to simplify this expression. How simple this can get? Let's go ahead and take a look. I'll be presenting more than one method at this point. I don't know how many, but it's going to be more than one. So let's start with the first method. Obviously, the first method is going to be a little lengthy because it's the first method. So we're going to go ahead and raise this to the 12th power. Now, one way to do it, which I'm, going to, I'm not going to get into, is take this expression and raise it to the 12th power and then raise 2 to the 12th power and you're going to get the answer. Obviously, I can go ahead and use the binomial theorem, which is going to give me 13 terms and I can go ahead and simplify it. But that's going to take a very long time, don't you think? Because we're going to have to deal with lots of lots of terms. Now, so this is going to be my input and you're going to be able to see the results from there. But first, let's go ahead and evaluate this expression and see if our answer is the same as what we get from Wolfram Alpha. Okay? So we're going to simplify this expression. And again, raising 12 power is not a very good method. It's going to take forever. But we can do the following. We can go ahead and take this expression and maybe square it first. See what happens if you square it. Because a lot of times these expressions are special and it's going to give us some type of integer or an imaginary number at some point. For example, if you start with 1 plus i and square it, you're going to get 2i. If you raise it to the fourth power, that means you're squaring 2i, which is going to give you negative 4. So it's kind of nice. Some of these expressions actually simplify really uh, quickly. So let's square this expression. I'll get a squared, b squared, minus 2ab. And that kind of gives me negative 6 minus 6 root 3i. You can definitely take out a 6 here and write this as negative 1 minus root 3i. And this should probably ring a bell, but we're not ringing that bell yet, right? We're not there yet. But basically, this might give us something. At this point, I'm not seeing anything. Pretend that you don't know what it is. And let's try cubing it, okay? Because cubing might give you a better idea. And there is two ways to cube it. You can multiply the square by itself, or you can just cube, uh, use the cubic formula. The cubic formula says a cubed, which is 3 root 3, minus 3 times a squared, which is 3 times b, and then plus 3a, 3 root 3, times uh, b squared. Uh, b squared is going to be 9i squared, which is negative 9. So we're going to get a negative 9 here. And finally, 3i cubed, negative 3i cubed, that's going to be uh, negative 27 i cubed, but i cubed is negative i, so it's going to be positive 27 i. Make sense? And that is a negative 27 i, so these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with something nicer. This is going to be 3 root 3 minus 27 root 3, and it's going to be negative 24 root 3. So that's kind of nice, because from the cube, I was able to get at least a rational number, a real number, right? Great. Let's go ahead and use that now. We have this to the 12th power, but I can write it as this expression cubed first and then raised to the 4th power because 3 times 4 is 12. But the 3rd power gives us negative 24 root 3, and then I'm going to raise it to the 4th power. Let's simplify this first, and then we can kind of take care of that divided by 2 to the power 12. Make sense? Now, we can kind of write this as... 24 uh, to the fourth power and square root of 3 to the fourth power. Square root of 3 squared is 3, 3 squared is 9. So that's what we're going to get from there. And now I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 2 to the power 12, right? And we can kind of do a little bit of uh, prime factorization here. 24 is uh, 2 to the third times 3 to the first. If you raise everything to the 12th, I mean to the fourth power here, you're going to get 2 to the 12th, and then 3 to the 4th, and then three, 9 is 3 squared, and then this is going to be 2 to the power 12th. Awesome. 2 to the power conveniently cancels out, leaving us with 3 to the 6th power, and that's just 3 to the 3rd squared, which is 27 squared, which is 700 
729 or you just memorized it and you know it's 729 yay the answer is a positive integer and that's just awesome let's go ahead and take a look at the second method if you're still around okay so make sure to stick around because the second method is going to be awesomer than the first method in my opinion to be able to uh, raise something to the 12th power you're thinking why not use Euler's formula right or the polar form that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and set z equal to root 3 minus 3i. Actually, I could probably do a little bit of improvement on that one, but let's leave the 2 outside because I can always divide by 2 to 12. No big deal. So if this is z, uh, I'm going to start by finding the modulus r, which is the absolute value. It's going to be the square root of 3 plus 9. That's 2 root 3. And then I'm going to take out a 2 root 3, and inside I should be getting 1 half minus root 3 over 2 I. Why did I get that? Because when I multiply these, it gives me a 3, and then 2's cancel le leaves us with 3i. Make sense? Okay, the expression inside the parentheses should be very familiar to you, hopefully, because 1 half and root 3 over 2, doesn't that remind you of the sine and cosine of 30 and 60 degrees? But wait a minute, this is positive, and that's a negative. So what does that mean? x positive x, negative y, it is the fourth quadrant, isn't it? And the cosine is one half. So think about the uh, acute angle whose cosine is one half, and that will be cosine of 60 or pi over three. So it's this one, right? And obviously when cosine is one half, the sine is gonna be root three over two, but I do want a negative sign. So I'm just gonna reflect it and that'll put us in the fourth quadrant. Yay, awesome. So this is basically negative 60 or negative uh, 60 plus 360, you can also call that 300 degrees. In other words, theta is just going to be 5 times pi over 6, right? That's the same thing as 300 degrees. Great. So we kind of got theta, we know r, we can go ahead and write this expression in polar form. And then raise it to the 12th power. So we now get 2 root 3 times e to the power i times 5 pi over 6. Remember, this expression is in the numerator, and I'm, I'm supposed to divide by 12, but let's go ahead and raise it to the 12, and then divide by 2 to the 12, right? Great. Now, how do you raise something like this to the 12th power? You raise this to the 12th power, 2 root 3, and then this expression is going to be multiplied by 12. 6 goes into 12 2 times, and we end up with i times 10 pi. 10 pi is a multiple of 2 pi, so it's 2 pi i. e to the power 2 pi i is just 1. That's unity. Awesome. Great. So we don't have to worry about it. And now we end up with something like this. 2 to the 12 is just going to be what? Oh, we forgot to divide by 2 to 12. I'm like, what is going on here? Something is missing. Okay. And then 2 to 12 is going to cancel out. Root 3 to the 12 is the same as 3 to the 6 because root 3 can be written as 3 to the power 1 half and 1 half goes into 12, or 2 goes into 12 six times, and 3 to the 6th power, as you should know, you know it's from the first method, don't you? 729, and that happens to be the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.